Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. I also have always loved barns and actually hoped one day of owning one. Since that may not be in my future, I thought getting some salvage from some old barns for my next project might be a good idea. I'm going to use barn wood that I got from Reclaimed Michigan. And by the way, if you want to see what Reclaimed Michigan is all about, it's a wonderful place to visit. Salvage, vintagey goodness, and of course, Old Barn Wood Rescue from Michigan Barns. You can click on the link above. But in this video, I'm going to take my entryway and add some barn wood to the walls and make it a little bit more interesting. See this wall? This whole space behind me and the space over here that you can't see? They're going to get a makeover because they're boring. This is the entryway of my side door and it's pretty boring. It also has some issues with paint peeling and I haven't done too much in it except hung up a coat rack. So it's time for a makeover in order to get started with this project. The first step is to clear everything out and fill those holes. I know I will be putting a wood wall over this but I still like to have a nice clean wall before I get started. And I'm also dealing with the areas of peeling paint. It's really important you scrape off as much as possible to repair the area or you're only going to have the problem return later. It was a big mess, but well worth it. Now it's time to prep the area for paint. Are you enjoying this video? If so, take a second to click the like button and subscribe. And if you click the bell, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. It really helps me to continue to grow my channel to help others to salvage, repurpose, and create. Next step was to patch the holes and sand them smooth. I use joint compound for this with a couple of coats. Before you apply your paint, you need to put a primer and sealer down. I'm using Kills Clear for this. While the primer and sealer were drying, it was time to turn my attention to the barn wood. It's really important before you do your barn wood wall that you prep your pieces. The first thing you want to do is check your boards for any nails. Luckily, I got these boards from Reclaimed Michigan, and most of the nails have already been taken out. There were one or two that it kind of slipped through. You will need to remove those. The next step is to wash the boards. I'm using hot water, Dawn dish soap, and a little bit of vinegar. Mix them in, and then I'm using an old broom to wipe down each board. It goes a lot quicker than a scrub brush and then I'll rinse them clean. You'll be amazed by how much dirt is on each board. The next step was to allow all the boards to dry in the sun. Make sure they're completely dry. I let my boards sit overnight. The next morning I made sure to clean each board. I just used a brush to do this, make sure to get all the fine particles off, and then I am going to be sealing with Minwax Polyacrylic. It is water-based and I'm using a satin finish. For more information on purchasing this, I will put a link down below. Once each board is cleaned, you just brush on the polyacrylic. I use two coats on each board. It's amazing how much this top coat changes the look of the boards and really brings them back to life. Back inside, the walls are prepped, everything is dry, and it is time to paint. For this project, I am using paint from Magnolia Home. The color is Salvage. 
When you're doing a barn wood wall, it's a really good idea to paint the wall underneath a dark color. So if you have any gaps or anything and you see some wall, it won't look as obvious. I figured a dark gray would do the job. Here are the basic tools that I used for the building of the wall itself. And I will put links down below for some of the larger items if you were interested in getting the same ones that I used. Obviously for many of the tools there are things you could substitute with, but having things like a compound miter and a nail gun for this project will really speed your whole project along. I need to give a quick shout out to my friend Brittany from Little Bits Workshop. She encouraged me to get the cordless nail gun, which was essential for this project. Uh, Brittany, I couldn't have done this project without you. Thank you for all of your help. She's also on YouTube. I will drop her links below. Please check her out. Once the paint was dry, it was time to get my stud finder. It's important to mark the studs on the walls with a straight line so when you are attaching the barn wood, the whole process can go a lot smoother. Most studs are located 16 inches off center and then I just mark them with pencil. If you're doing an entire barn wood wall, make sure that your lines go all the way up to the top of the wall. For me, my barn wood wall is only gonna go up about chair rail height, so that's what I mark. I know a lot of other people like to lay out their boards ahead of time to get an idea of how things are going to look. I did this too, but I found out because of my wall and the weird angle, I really kind of had to make it work as I went and there were adjustments needed. So it's completely up to you. If you have a real easy wall, that might be a really good idea. You could even take a picture of it or number your boards so you know exactly where they go. Two coats of polyacrylic is on all of my barn wood and they have dried completely. Now an important step before you get started, especially if you're using different size boards, is to lay them out by size. I also sorted them by color. This makes it a lot easier when you're looking for a certain board that you can find it. I started at the bottom and you put your board on, make sure it's level, and then you're going to nail right in to where you mark the studs. Continue adding boards. It's that simple, except it's not really. I decided to use different widths and different sizes, so it really took a few trials and errors to get the right boards in the right place. Obviously, if you're doing this project, it might be a good idea to consider the size of your boards. They're all the same size and width, the project will go a lot quicker. I did get a little creative in filling some of the gaps. Remember how I said sorting the boards outside was a good idea? It was, but I found myself constantly bringing different boards to try in and out, and then having to go back outside to cut boards to size. It all worked. But once I got too many boards, I would have to take them all back outside to clear the space. I was working in a tiny space. Ideally, a larger room would probably be a lot easier. And even with the best planning, there was one section that once I put in, I just didn't like. I figured it was better to take it out and make it look the way I really wanted it to. And I was loving how it was looking. The process was really pretty simple. You will see the door opening and closing a lot because my miter saw was outside to keep sawdust at a minimum. Other than that, the process was pretty simple. I was also extremely lucky to find this board in my wood scrap pile that had the perfect fit for what I needed. The 
end of my wall had an angle to it and I could have used my compound miter saw to cut each board to exactly fit, but I had seen a picture on Pinterest of a wood wall and really liked how it looked. So that's what I decided to do. It was a little easier, obviously, for your wall. You do what works best for you. The best part about using real barn wood is the history of each piece and the texture. I just kept wondering where all these boards had been and how much they had seen as I was putting them up in my house. I had finished my wall, but I had two of these really special boards I wanted to put somewhere, so I hung them vertically on my small side wall. The project is complete, and I have to tell you, this is my favorite room in my house. <laughs> I have a barn. I love the wood. I love staring at it. I just totally enjoy the space. In fact, if you remember, this is where I hung up coats before. And uh, it took me a while to even get my coat rack up because then I knew that some of the barn wood would be covered up. This is a great project. If you're thinking about doing it, you do not have to do it exactly how I did. In fact, I wanna share with you now before the big reveal of the space, a few tips and tricks that I've learned while doing the project, and I hope it'll help you. Tip number one, you have to love the wood you pick. I know all the different sized boards and all the different colors, it might not be your thing. For me, this is exactly what I wanted. I wanted lots of history. I wanted it rustic. I wanted lots of colors. This was perfect for me, but for you, make sure you pick out what you want. Also, keep in mind the size of the boards. This is harder if you're gonna have different depths, different sizes, so take that into consideration. If you are doing this the first time and you just want it to go easy and quick, get all the same size boards, get the boards you love. You can do this all with different wood. You can do it all with the same wood. You can do it with chippy white barn wood, however you will enjoy it. I really chose a much more rustic look and this is exactly what I love. I also have different grains of wood, which some people might not want in a wall. They might want it really smooth finish, so consider that too. Some of mine are more raised. Some of the wood, you can actually see where it was cut. It's just exactly what I wanted, but make sure you're getting the wood that you want for your project. The next thing I wanna talk about is the space you're working in. Larger spaces with less angles are easier. So consider that. I wanna really thank you for your patience while I was filming this project. This space is tight. There's a lot of angles. Filming was tricky at times, especially when I was using a new nail gun. If you have a small space working in it, cutting the wood, how is that all gonna work? I wouldn't want to do this project in winter time, going in and out to use the miter saw. That would be a lot more effort and cold and not a lot of fun. This was the perfect way for me to do it, although I would have loved to have a space large enough to have all my tools and be able to cut the wood right in that area. So make sure to consider the size of your space. Also consider the wall. I think a wall with less angles is of course going to be much easier. The next tip I learned along the process is make sure you love the look as you go. There was one spot where I put in a few boards and I didn't like it. I just didn't like the look at all, so I ripped it out. But I'm so grateful that I did it because I love how the wood looks now. So if you're building your wall, 
you can adjust things as you go. You can change things and get the look that you love. The next thing I want to talk about are power tools. It's really important to have some power tools. And just because you're female doesn't mean you can't have all of the tools and learn how to use them. Find someone to show you how if you need help. I am so grateful to my friend Brittany who gave me some pointers on how to use the nail gun, but I am so grateful for the nail gun. It helped so much. I can't imagine hammering in all of these nails for this project on my own. The last bit is while you're doing this project, make sure you're using a level to line things up. And also, if you can get a second set of hands to help you, it could be very helpful with the longer boards. Having someone to help is always a good idea. This project, I hope, will turn out to be one of your favorites, just like it is mine. Let's take a look at my DIY barnwood wall that I created. Thank you so much for watching this video. Now get out there to salvage, repurpose, and create.